so nice to see you guys again. Now I've been reading something absolutely terrific and it's called Secrets of the Tides. This is a wonderful novel. It's by a first time author, Hannah Richel. She's Australian. Her and her husband came over from the UK. She has young children and to fill in her spare time <laughs> whilst raising her children, uh -huh. she's written this magnificent novel called Secrets of the Tides. Now the tides are a family. It's set in England. Uh, and they're a family full of secrets and lies and lots of emotional, heart-wrenching stuff happening. It is one of the best, almost compelling first chapters that I've read for a while. Uh, the book opens up when this woman um, jumps off a bridge, the Westminster Bridge, and it really is a great start to a fiction title. Hannah herself is going to be at the Sydney Writers' Festival. She sold rights right around the world um, and I think she sold it for quite a bit of money. I think this is going to be a number one bestseller. And I am sure that it will be. But for me, the, the, the reader for this is... It's, it's women. It's a woman sure. writer yeah, no, writing for women. That. You said it was heart-wrenching. It was really heart-wrenching. I cried, actually. There were some parts I cried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, didn't you, you cry? I didn't. You didn't? I didn't cry. I, uh, I in fact, I, I actually found it a little contrived. Uh, I, I actually felt the craft of it, like a, like a Hollywood yeah. blockbuster movie. It I is could a feel... blockbuster book. It's going to be yeah. a big book that I think women will love. There's the house. Mm. It's this looming presence after that opening chapter. Yeah. But I just wanted it to be a character in the book. Mm. It just became a loom looming presence. Yeah. The, the mother, Helen, yeah. is a classics professor and the daughters uh, Cassandra. Ca Cassandra. Pandora. Pandora. It's but, just not but fully Michael, developed. But it was a page turner. It is a very easy read. It's a very comfortable yeah. Yeah. Sunday afternoon read. it looks read. like that too. It's it lovely. does look like that, yes. Lucky, what did you think? Look, one glance at the cover and I knew that this is not necessarily for me. Um, Why? Why? What's look, about the... What's it about the book? Uh, look, flowers, two girls playing on the beach. Flowers. Side. It's a, pastels. It's <laughs> pastels. Um, it's, a, it's a woman's book. I like boys' books. One of the people said I'd judge a book by its cover, but 90% of people that come in here do exactly that. If I particularly love a book, but the cover is horrid, I will say, do not judge this book by the cover. Some of the most ordinary covers have extraordinary stories inside. This is a cover I can relate to. Uh, this is Hear Me Roar. It's a, uh, a memoir by a uh, stay-at-home dad. So Ben Robertson is a Queensland journalist and when he and his wife uh, found out that they were going to have their first child, they had to decide who was going to be the breadwinner and who was going to be the stay-at-home parent. In this case, he's a journalist. Uh, his wife was uh, you know, earned a lot more and so uh, they decided that she would be the one to, to go back to work. This is his experience of cleaning nappies, projectile vomits, um, doing the shopping, the daily grind and joy of, of being a stay-at-home dad. One of the reasons it jumped out at me at the moment is that I have been a stay-at-home dad um, for the last six months or so and uh, I was reading this and kept on going, yes, 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 that's happened to me. Oh, thank God it's happened to somebody else. <laughs> and, you, and that's exactly the same for me because I have also been a stay-at-home dad. I have yeah. got a five-year-old, I've got a six-month-old yeah. and Absolutely, the solace of understanding, you yeah, know, that other yeah. people are being... The shared experience. <laughs> yes, yes, you're not alone. <laughs> and because I haven't been a stay-at-home dad, I didn't enjoy it as much. Although I've got to say, it was it was lovely to read. I mean, he writes beautifully. He's he a journalist he he and he writes like a journalist. It's, and it was laugh out loud, was, funny in parts. It was. I mean, one of the great things about it is that there are plenty of books written by women about their experience of being at home. Yeah. And there are similarities, but there are also differences. There are things like being the outsider at a mother's, mother's group. You're always a guest. When you're in the supermarket with your little boy or your yeah. little girl and people assume that you're having the day off, well, what do you do? And you say, well, I'm a stay-at-home dad. Well, what do you really do? <laughs> yeah, and it's all that sort of, you know, the rhetoric is right. that, you know, the gender stereotyping has broken down. But, yeah, not no. really. A simple cover is always really good. Eye-catching, simple, but not tacky. It's just tragic when one of your favourite authors comes, comes out in a drastic, dreary cover. They have a stunning cover, people can't resist. Whereas it has a dreary cover, it's not, not a good start. What I've been reading is... What have you been reading? I've been reading Lionel Shriver, The New Republic. Lionel Shriver is, of course, uh, the author of uh, We Need to Talk About Kevin, the 2005 winner of the Orange Prize, 
this book was written, in fact, before uh, we need to talk about Kevin, and, and there's a reason why. It is the story of Edgar Kellogg, a middle-aged, almost successful lawyer who uh, wants something different in life and he manages to talk himself to becoming a forest correspondent, a stringer, a super stringer, in a little peninsula off Portugal who wants to secede. There's a terrorist organisation and uh, they are undertaking a worldwide terror campaign. It is full on literary satire about the manufacture of the news. And it's boring, Michael. It is boring. No, 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 no. <laughs> I found it really boring. Of course I mean, I found it worthy and, gosh, she's a very, very serious writer and I know it's meant to be it's satirical funny. as well. It I is funny, it but she is serious I mean... about words. My theory about the fact that it hasn't been published before is that she would never have had it published. She needed to have a breakthrough novel like Kevin to actually be yeah, recognised yeah, for the writer that she is. Yeah. I think I'm with Michael on this one. I found it really, really funny. The description of this this territory in southern Portugal, um, Barba. Fictional. Fictional, yes, yeah, but yeah. I had to yeah, actually, yeah. I found myself, and I'm quite slightly embarrassed to say, I found myself looking at, at an atlas and, <laughs> and, and, and realising, oh, actually, this place doesn't actually exist. No, it doesn't but you've exist. got the, uh, the the hairy pear and the, and the, 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 uh, the national fruit, yeah. the secessionist movement called the SOBs. So close that it, it almost could be real. Yes, uh, at its core, it is about the manufacture of the news, how news agencies, how newspapers create the news, create the story and this sort of symbiotic relationship between the terrorist cells that need the publicity and the, and the reporters who need something to report. report about. <laughs> Did she need 300 odd pages to tell that story? Oh, I'd um, say probably I, not. I, I, I'd say she's... Um, I, I thought she it... is fearless. I mean, she sets up and then she just drives it all the way through, you know? Yeah, I thought it, 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 it was cranking along for about 150 pages. But there's a turn, there's a turn around the sort of the, the middle yeah. of the book as well. You either get take along with that turn or you possibly don't. I'd say yeah. a lot of people dropped out at that point, Michael. Yeah. But, I she, <laughs> but obviously you did. Obviously. <laughs> the other thing about this book is that her French publisher wouldn't publish it. The reason why is it was too masculine a book. It's a it boy's is. book. It is, it is. As opposed yeah. to Secrets of Tides, which is, which is a girl's book. Right here there we the, go, we've yeah. got a yeah. selection. We're all about gender today. Yeah, a boy's book, written by a woman. There we who's go. often mistaken for being a man. It's very important to judge a book by its cover all the time. With thousands and thousands of books coming out every year, even the spine needs to be eye-catching these days. I collect books because they're beautiful things, but I will avoid it if it's got a bad cover, and I'll wait for another edition to come out that has a good cover. You know? I must admit, I do that too. Um, here are some of my favourite covers. Penguin, Buddies, you know it's quality. Exploding Car, shorthand for what's in the book. The Nude Woman on the cover, George Bush, Osama Bin Laden. That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. But I think, and I'm going to throw a spanner in the works here, this is all changing. We're in a transitionary time. With e-books, I think it's going to be less about the cover and more about word of mouth, more mm. about social media. I think cover designs will change as well. They'll mm. become simplified. Uh, more about the author's name and the editor's name. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. I mean, e-books is changing our landscape. True. Uh, when you're reading an e-book, nobody can tell what you're reading, which is perhaps why erotica and romance is so popular as e-books. Ah, right. ah, Very ah. popular genres. Yeah. Speaking of e-books, um, out now uh, we have a new techno thriller from a digital only publisher called Momentum. And see the simplicity of that cover? Designers are actually starting mm. to adapt to the medium. Mm. Mm. Yep. You've probably heard of this, uh, Fifty Again? Shades of Grey, yep. um, soft core bondage mummy porn from Random House. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it'll be as successful in print uh, where people can actually see what you're reading will be interesting to see. And of course, um, was shortlisted for the Booker Prize, um, out now in paperback. Um, a real cracker of a novel. It's fantastic. Love that book. Well, until next time, I'll see you guys later. Looking forward to it. See you then.